This will remind you that I've been here once and can return. The Mark of Zorro was a 1940 black and white swashbuckling adventure film starring Tyrone Power, Linda Darnell, and Basil Rathbone. It was a great film. Plenty of action, adventure, a little romance, and a soaring soundtrack. This one was a lot of fun, and thanks to my friend Joel for recommending this film. I'll summarize the movie and then give some closing thoughts. So the film opens up, and it's the early 1800s, and we meet the character Diego Vega, played by actor Tyrone Power. Now, he's an excellent swordsman in Spain who is summoned home by his father to California. And California at this point in history is still under the control of Spain. So he gets on a boat and he heads home. Diego heads to his old home and finds out that his father, Don Alejandro Vega, who's played by Montague Love, is no longer the mayor. He was deposed and now the peasants in this village are suffering under the cruel leadership of Luis Quintero, who's played by actor J. Edward Bromberg, along with his soldiers, who are led by the sinister Captain Esteban Pascal, who's played by legendary actor Basil Rathbone. Well, the soldiers are out and about and they're demanding more taxes from the people. But who should show up? Yep, it's Zorro, and of course, he is the superhero that these locals love. And he smacks down the troops and leaves his signature Z mark on the wall. So Don Diego manages this secret identity thing. By day, he's this lazy dilettante who just sort of sits around and seems bored and he's yawning all the time. But at night, he's the masked vigilante Zorro. So he's got a good system going that people all believe in him. Now a little later into the film, while he's sneaking around in the guise of a friar, he talks to Lolita, who's played by the lovely actress Linda Darnell. And of course, he's instantly fallen in love with her. And it's a cute scene, actually, as he seems to break character as this friar, you know, kind of telling about how beautiful she is. But soon enough, he's interrupted. The soldiers are looking for Zorro. So he has to make a daring escape. And there's this exciting nighttime chase on horseback, and Zorro gets away. <laughs> So Diego's plan is that, as Zorro, he orders the greedy Quintero to return back to Spain and instead appoint Don Alejandro as his successor. Shortly after this, Lolita discovers that Diego is actually Zorro. Now, however, his disguise is blown when his friend, this friar character, is arrested by Pascal. Now, it's here that Diego, who is not in his Zorro disguise, challenges this captain to a duel. And what follows is an epic sword fight scene. I mean, this is one of a kind, and both actors are clearly very talented with sword play. However, Diego is the better swordsman and he kills Pascal and he's soon arrested and sentenced to death. And with not much left to the film, can Diego, as Zorro, make his escape? Can he stop the greedy Quintero? Will he be reunited with his lovely Lolita? And can he bring peace and justice to this little village? Well, you need to see the movie for yourself to find out how it ends. So some closing thoughts on The Mask of Zorro. This one was really a lot of fun. And while not overly deep with the story, let's be honest, this was just an early superhero film with a larger than life hero and some great action scenes. It's not meant to be overly deep. And I loved it. This film was produced by 20th Century Fox you can kind of see it. this was their answer to The Adventures of Robin Hood from 1938 that was produced by Warner Brothers, and that one had Errol Flynn. And you can also see some of the similarities in characters, namely Basil Rathbone is the bad guy in this film as well. This was also a remake of an earlier Zorro film from 1920 with Douglas Fairbanks Sr. And it was based on the book The Curse of Capistrano, written by Johnson McCulley. The music in the film was also excellent, and it was by Alfred Newman. I really enjoyed seeing Tyrone Power in this role, as he has that same energetic nature as Errol Flynn. And you know, with the big cheesy smile when he's engaged in a sword fight. And you watch, and you can't help but see the parallels with characters like Batman and Superman, where you have the heroic character who's balancing that secret identity and nobody seems to get that 
he's hiding a secret. And I love how his alter ego in this film is this foppish, bored, aristocratic guy who just sort of roams around carefree and Tyrone Power really hams it up in the role, you know, complaining about his bathwater temperature and things like that. <laughs> it's, it's great. Linda Darnell was lovely in the role as Lolita, and she has a really nice screen chemistry with Tyrone Power. I believe she was only 16 in this film, from what I read. Basil Rathbone, of course, was fantastic, and I've seen him in a number of films, namely some of the old Universal monster movies, and of course, the adventures of Robin Hood. He's just this suave villain, both his voice and his mannerisms. And he's honestly one of my favorite villains to see in a movie. I was reading that he did most of his own sword work as well in the film. And as mentioned, that duel scene between Tyrone Power and Basil Rathbone is incredible. Both actors do a great job. And to me, that was really the highlight of the film. And just a note regarding Batman. Now, in the world of DC Comics, it was actually after seeing the Mark of Zorro playing in a theater when young Bruce Wayne leaves and witnesses his parents getting killed by a bad guy. I have to admit, I really haven't seen many Zorro films before, even though there have been around 20 or so that have been made over the years. And the only one that really comes to mind that I have seen and I really enjoyed was The Mask of Zorro from 1998 with Antonio Banderas and the gorgeous Catherine Zeta-Jones. But I liked this film too, and I wouldn't mind catching more Zorro films in the future. He's a really entertaining character. So that's The Mark of Zorro from 1940. It was an excellent swashbuckler film, and it's one worth checking out. Good old one, fat as ever. <laughs>